So, uh, let's go ahead and move off of that one. I want to talk about something that's near and dear to, uh, to our hearts. Sports media layoffs today. And there were a ton of them. Uh, Golly. Yeah. 46 of them at the I Athletic. thought we were past this. I really did. Well, they had all the furloughs. They had all that kind of mess. And, you know, it's, it's pretty nuts. The Athletic laid off 46 people, which was almost 8% of their staff. Five of them were from the college football realm. Uh, they also had several NFL writers uh, that were let go. The Falcons beat writer for them. The Arizona Cardinals writer. Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers and Clippers writers. Um, but here's the thing. It's, the Athletic is still fighting uh, newspapers and online papers that are actually in those local markets. Now, the guys that they have covering them are in the, uh, the local markets, but the reason that these specific people were cut, at, at least from my prior experience in this, is uh, the people that were cut were the ones that do not have the same traction. They don't have the same market share, et cetera. Uh, yeah. It's, it's really hard to get people to go and read your stuff if they are so tuned in on somebody else's stuff, right? Yep. So, it, like, for example, Auburn writer Justin Ferguson, he was let go, but there are 47 Auburn beat writers. Auburn fans, it, the Auburn fan base, while big, is not as big as... Alabama or Ohio State or whatever. Uh, just to give you another idea, Texas beat writer, Kalen Jones. Like, you would think Texas would have a ton of readers. However, Texas has had beat writers that have been around forever. So it, it's hard to break them from their newspaper or the same website that they've been going to that's free forever yep. to switch back over. Uh, Boise, no, State writer, uh, Boise State writer Dave Southern Xavier writer Shannon Russell, uh, Louisville writer Danielle Lerner, uh, Arkansas writer Kelly Stacy. Uh, I mean, just across the board. Spurs writer, Phoenix Suns writer, Charlotte Hornets, 76ers, the Florida Panthers, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They had somebody covering basically every team in the country. Well, and therein lies the problem with some of these places. That there's no reason to not have the, the guy who covers the Panthers also cover the Hornets. Agreed. Because Agreed. because North Carolina is just not that massive of a of a state, a population, a fan base. Really, like I don't know that the need is so great that you need a Charlotte Hornets article every day. I mean, here in Memphis, we don't need a Grizzlies article every day, but across the city, we've got multiple people doing it. And there's people that so, you know. Uh, yeah. that you respect more, or uh, not even respect, that you trust more. We just know and we followed forever. I mean, you and I right. know Verno. We've known Verno. And Chris, for- Chris Harrington has covered him forever. Yep. Jeff Calkins nope. writes the big yeah, articles. Yeah, Calkins. I was, just, I was about to go through the list of them. Yeah, yep. and these are guys that we have known and been the voice of Memphis sports. But the thing is, is they're the voice of Memphis sports, and that's why we yep. have this relationship with them. They don't just tell me about the Grizzlies or about Tiger basketball. They – they are my voice for everything going on in the city. I think that's so much more valuable than having one guy in a town, especially the smaller cities, right? Like, right. If, if you're in New York, yeah, you, you need a guy to cover the Giants. You need a guy to cover the Jets. You need a guy to cover – because you just got too many people that want to only know about this, and they don't care about the rest. We're, we're, the people that are getting laid off are the guy in Boise. And it's tough to compete with the local guys that talk about all of the sports because they have the fan base, I guess. They've got the market share. That's the market share. I'm trying to figure out what you would call people who just follow a certain sports guy. Yeah, market share is is typically kind of industry term. Excuse me. I feel like you're Um, selling something with market share. I know. It just sounds sounds a little shady, but, uh, you know, business terms, Eh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's it it sucks to see that. Obviously, you don't want to see that go down. I mean, nope. I'm a I, I'm a uh, subscriber of the Athletic. I love reading that site. However, I don't go read everybody. I've got my set we, teams that I you follow. You can't. I mean, you you no, can't. You could be the greatest reader in the world and the most unbelievable lover of sports news. You couldn't spend every day trying to read all these guys. Oh yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible. Um, but that, you know, there's the big writers, there's Bruce Feldman and 
Stuart Mandel and yes. blah, 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 on and on. Well, there are some guys that, that are there, Dan Wetzel, okay? Like, well, Wetzel's they, a might Yahoo have a cert, yeah. they might have a certain area or a region they cover, but they get carte blanche to write about whatever they want. You got it. And those guys and are the editors somebody, yeah. or whatever. So yeah, they, those guys are different. You got it. You got it. And those are the ones that I, you know, I will typically yeah. read whatever David, they put David out. David Aldridge yeah. is somebody in the D.C. area. He writes a lot of basketball. But if David wanted to write about something else, David probably could. He's yeah. been around the sports news industry for my entire life. So, yeah, he's earned that right. No, you you got that right. Uh, on top of that, so the Athletic laying off 8% of their staff. Um <laughs> On top of that, you've also got SB Nation and Vox Media uh, laying off, you know, offering people buyouts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We talked the other day about Spencer Hall, who had Every Day Should Be Saturday. Well, his guy on the other side of him on his Shutdown Fullcast podcast was uh, Jason Kirk, and he was an editor for Banner Society along with Spencer Hall. Banner Society was basically an SB Nation college football site, and... They let go of Jason Kirk. They let go of Richard Johnston. They let go of Alex Kirshner today. Uh, so all three of those guys are looking, and, I mean, it's, well, four if you count Spencer. Uh, that's a lot of really good college football media guys, including the ones at The Athletic, that are now looking for work in a really strange uh, time. I mean, it's it's just really weird, and it sucks. And it's what terrifies me about this business that we are in, Right. Uh, you never know when cuts are coming, what's going to happen, uh, and it all comes down to basically clicks and and all that. So, I mean, obviously, you guys that are watching the show, I see a lot of you in here, not a bunch in the chat. Terry uh, said on Facebook, I agree, I follow only a few guys for the teams I like, but hell, for the Cubs alone, there's a ton of writers, but I only like two of them, don't understand why they need so many. Uh, well, they don't really need so many well, it's not a Cubs but, decision. It's all these different publications have their own yes. writer. And they it, want you to I, come I wonder to if you were really good. If you were a top-tier guy in a city like Chicago, could you work for yourself and just basically sell your article? So, so you might have your article run in the Chicago Tribune and then also run on these, like, four websites and be like, you know, it's the same article, but all these people are just paying one guy for their information because – he's the best or one lady because she's the best. I think everybody wants exclusive, right? They, they want their own person so that if oh, you like man, that but person. I'd rather, I'd rather have the best guy and have to share somebody else has it. So I got to get them to my website over the other website, but I know I got the best content instead of the fourth or fifth best person trying to write this stuff. Mm, you know, I what, got, what I got your, who I can afford. What are your thoughts on the athletic as a whole? Uh, it, you know, we've talked about this in the past when it first was brought up. I mean, they, they started, what, three years ago? And yeah. we were already podcasting at that point. We've been doing this for a little over four years now. Uh, we're going into our fifth year. Yeah. This will be our fifth football year. So, at this point, you know, I was a little skeptical at first. I was, you know. I think it's a tough business market model because they have too many. They laid off 8% of their people. And look at the amount of people they have. My question is, is. I just think you're overblown. I, I think you just have too many people trying to do too small of jobs. Well, and on top of that, it, it's tough to get readers to you if a lot of people can prefer to just go to the free website that's got the advertisements, right? Yes. Because once an article comes out, everybody has the info. If somebody has a uh, an athletic subscription and they yep. want to write about the athletic article, I mean, it's out there for free then. So all you well, yeah, do is we, we a have a, we have a thing where and when we do this too, but media has not just become the sport you cover or the story you cover, but now the news that cover that we cover that news. Uh, Terry jumps out. Oh, Damien said, "What's up, Damien? Nice to see you on YouTube." Yep. There, uh, Terry said, "Yeah, the guy Brett from Bleacher Nation uh, sells his articles because he's so in depth. I, I guess in depth and yep. writes about what people want." The one for the Tribune, no one likes, but she gets exclusive because she's with the big paper. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah and she's getting certain deals. But if she's not as good, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, people go to the the better writers, like where they get the most information. So, yes. uh, the, again, it's what terrifies but I don't even See, here's the thing, though. I don't know that it's the most information either. 
Some of it's just how good of a writer are you and how much content. Obviously, the person from the Tribune has access that this other guy doesn't have, all right? Yeah. But but if she's not as entertaining to read, then, you know. Yeah, then you're not going to get the the readers. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. Uh, For those of you that are watching the show, you can jump in the chat there. Obviously, any platform, Periscope, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, uh, it will pop up in the bottom left of your screen your name is right there. So it doesn't matter what platform you're on. You can drive the conversation along with us. Uh, yes, I am terrified of the direction of sports media right now. All of the layoffs, all of this different stuff. So that stuff never crazy. scares me, okay? Because you just got to, you, you got, we got to do what we got to do. All right. Oh, yeah. No, and no, at no, the no, end I, of the day, does this just, we, fee, we make our living off of what a lot of what they do. Yeah. Okay. But and and while there are well, we're also in the opinion million business. more of us than there are of them. Yeah, we're in the opinion business. They well, yes. are not. Like they are not. Somebody's got. Somebody's going to go find this information out. Yeah, and somebody's going to get it to the masses. Okay, that right. There, there are a lot fewer of them than there are of us. Uh, ben jumps in on Twitch. He said, "I just follow Instagram pages for my sports info for the most part." Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's what, what a lot of people, people do. do. Follow yeah. a tw- They pick a social media outlet. Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and then you just follow the reporters, the writers, whatever that you like, and, and then get it from there. That, yeah. That's that you get eighty percent of what you need from there. If you want the details of the deal, then you got to pay for the content. But the problem is, is so few people care about those minute details. So much of the information comes in just the tweet or the blurb of it, and then you wait you know, an extra day, maybe an extra four or five hours even. Yep. And then you can have all the information because some other media outlet like us or ESPN or Fox or somebody of that nature, somebody on YouTube is going to tell you about it. Yeah. Well, Terry jumps in with that. He said, my opinion is podcasts are better because you can listen when you want. And if they do articles, you can follow them on Twitter and read them there, which is better than looking for an article or paying for a subscription. Yeah. We we began doing podcasts because we realized – that's how we consume almost all of our media. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, mean the I reason, don't have time. You come to up here all the time and you say, well, did you know about this? No, I didn't. Because it's not something I'm instinctively. I, I listen to nothing because there are no live sports going right now. There's nothing live that I have watched or listened to since the, the since the, uh, the Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson golf yeah. uh, thing that that's. And before that, Nothing until the the UFC, the UFC fight. Thing. Even then, yeah. I watched it kind of later. Yeah, you only watched like I didn't, the main I didn't card watch it later. live because I was I was just doing family crap and I couldn't. Yeah. But like, so if there's a commercial for UFC 250, I'm not I'm not getting it unless they're advertising it on one of the podcasts I listen to. Yeah, and Terry said that's why everyone's got to like and share this one to get it going bigger. Yeah, 100%. that's right. Everybody oh boy, share this Terry. thing out. Appreciate Tell that, your friends. Tell your friends, we always 